Hello viewers, this is Just Fake Network TV, a place where you can get the latest information about Nigeria news and all the news in details. Do away with executive orders or risk dictatorship, says Ekwere Madu. Former Deputy Senate President E.K. Ekwere Madu Wednesday said, unless Nigeria stops executive legislation through executive orders, the country may be heading towards authoritarianism. And possible dictatorship. The fact is that the country has already turned into dictatorship. It is not now that we know that this country, Nigeria, has turned into dictatorship. And this one that Ekoromadu is saying, fine, it's good that he said it, but I think it's already late for him to say that because he is even part of the people that are dictating for the for, for their states. So let's go further. Ekoromadu, according to a state by a spokesman, Uche Anichuku, said this in its paper titled Executive Order and Democratic Governance, which it delivered at the Hongwen 60th Conference of the Nigerian Bar Association, NBH, in Abuja on Wednesday. He said democracy emphasizes the divisions of governmental powers into three different arms, each with distinct powers, and responsibility clearly provided for in a country's ground norm. The philosophy behind these compartmentalizations of powers is the need to preserve the liberty of citizens and prevent abuse and tyranny by one arm of government over the other. Section 4 of the 1999 Constitution provides that the legislative powers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be vested in the National Assembly. The National Assembly is empowered to exclusively legislate for the peace, order, and good government of the federations or any part of it with respect to any matters on the ex exclusive legislative list in the second schedule to the Constitution. The only section in the Constitution that confers the executive with some forms of quasi lawmaking powers is section 315 of the constitution which provides that the president of the govern or the governor as the case may be may modify the text of an existing legislation as he considers necessary or expedi expedient to bring such law into conformity with the provisions of the constitution it must however be understood that section 315 is not a blanket provision, enabling a vicious incursions, incursions into legislative domain of lawmaking. It is first a transitional provision inserted into the Constitution upon the return to democratic rule in 1999 to enable the governorship to fill in a legislative gap typically expected of a country transitioning from a military system to democracy. Even more, the authority to modify legislations must be limited to existing laws and not to enact and make new laws. A proper understanding of the context of Section one of Section 315 and the reason why it was insacted in the first place will reveal that the provision has duly outlived its usefulness and ought not to remain a part of, a, of our body of laws. He regretted that the Constitution Amendment Bill to delete the provisions from the Constitution in the 8th National Assembly was not signed by the President. He cited Executive Order 6 and 10 of the President Buhari's administration as examples of overreaching executive orders. He reminded that much as the President had good intentions to get the governors to implement the Constitution's Amendment, granting financial autonomy to state houses of assembly and state judiciary, Harvard professors Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Ziblatt in their book. How Democracies Die had warned that the road to dictatorship is always paved with good intentions. Part of the executive order, others the impoundment of part of monthly allocations of any state that fails to remit these monies to state judiciary and state legislature. This does not in any way represent what we amended in the Constitution. The order is evidently contrary to the provisions of Section 162 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, 
and the positions of the Supreme Court of Nigeria in the case of Attorney General of Abia State versus Attorney General of the Federation, he said. A query Madu called on the NBA and other public interest groups to heart as gatekeepers by seeking the interventions of the court at the earliest opportunities against any executive orders, which seems to be in violations of constitutional provisions for the principles of separations of power in order to stop the executive from usurping the legislative powers of the Federation. The judiciary must be active in the protections of the well-acceptance principle of separations of powers and Nigerians' choices of federalisms as a more suitable governance model for a plural society such as Nigeria. In fact, the executive should mind their business, as is stated in Section 5 of the 1999 Constitution, I also propose that the executive seeks a resolution of two-thirds of both houses of the National Assembly if there is a need for an executive hall that is said. Well, so viewers, you've heard it all. Mostly it's just all about uh, Nigeria uh, going from the military era to uh, a civilian era. And what I can say is that uh, to us, we think that uh, we are in the civilian era, but... With the way our president is is actually running his own leadership, to me, I would say that we are in a military era. We are in a dictatorship era. Because the fact is that people are scared to speak the truth. The fact is that even the human rights are scared to fight for, the, for Nigerian citizens. You know, for instance, for instance, let's give an example of Showeri. Those days, when it came out for harsh revolution, what ended it? We all knew everything that happened in the, in the, in the process. We all knew how they attacked this guy. I am not against Showeri, neither am I supporting Showeri. But I, what I can, I'm trying to say is that there is no freedom of speech in Nigeria. There is no freedom at all in Nigeria. When you speak against the president, they might deal with you. And that's just the fact about it. They might deal with you. You know, there is one of the prominent leaders that I heard about sometimes ago. You know, they said one guy had actually made a poem about him. And the guy actually spoke a lot of things against him. You know, I will remember the name. And if I can't remember the name, maybe then my, one of my next uh, videos, I will talk about it. You know... And before you know it, they arrested the, 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 the wife of the guy that did a poem. They arrested him. They arrested his family because they were not able to get the, the man in particular. Just because he actually said something and he made mention of that man, the prominent the politicians in one of his poems, just because of that. You know, this is to tell the, the, the family was, in, they was arrested was jailed because of freedom of speech. Because we are scared to speak up. We are scared that if we speak up, speak up, what would our leaders do? What would be the result of everything? So to me, this is a, a leadership of dictatorship. A leadership of dictatorship in such a way that, let's give an example of Opus Adima, now, he is the governor of Imo State, but he was forcefully elected to become the governor of Imo State. That is the leader of this dictatorship. But may God help us. This, our country, it is only God that can save us from it. So, viewers, what do you think? What is your own take about this? Your comment is highly appreciated. And kindly drop your comment in the comment section below. For those who subscribe, we want to say a very, very big thank you to you for subscribing. We'll say God bless you. If you're yet to do so, kindly press the subscription button below. And also, please don't forget to press the notification button so that whenever we upload news, you will definitely be the first person to watch our latest news anytime, any day. We appreciate you for being there for us at all time. We thank you for watching our video. We thank you for taking your time to comment on our comment page. We appreciate you. We say God bless you. And just for Network TV saying stay safe at this crucial time. It is very important to you and me. Have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Bye.